Here we are in section 2.2, exercises part A, numbers 1 through 11. It says add or subtract and then simplify. Now adding and subtracting, that's from chapter 1. So here are some review problems to make sure we've done it, but we get to use calculators for the remainder of the time here. We could do this by hand, they even have common denominators, but we'll pull out our calculator. And this is a calculator that I googled to be able to handle fractions. So we're going to punch in 6 and 7 eighths and it is minus 13 and 3 eighths. And I hit calculate and the result will give it to me, oh it gives it to me in improper fractions, negative 13 halves or negative six and a half, or negative 6.5. I'm going to write negative six and a half. Let's check our answer to make sure it's correct. And there we have it, negative six and a half. Good. Number two, seven and five twelfths plus 187 and three fourths. We would have to get a common denominator here, but let's use that calculator. Reset so that we have seven and five twelfths. We're adding 187 and three fourths and calculate that. Improper fraction looks terrible, but this is 195 and 1 sixth. So 195 and 1 sixth. Let's check our answer to make sure it is correct. And yes, it is 195 and 1 sixth. Now if you chose to write those answers as uh, their improper fractions, that's perfectly all right, or their decimal representations would be okay as well. Number three, 21 and 5 6 minus 97 and 2 15 let's pull up that calculator reset it and so we get 21 and 5 6 plus nope we are minusing 97 and 2 15 now in this one you'll notice if we did it by hand we would need to get a common denominator between 6 and 15 probably up around 30 change them borrow s subtract with the negative on top so this is where we get to see how enjoyable it can be to use a calculator look at that negative 75.3 is the decimal here's the mixed number version I'll write that up here negative 75 and 3 tenths and let's double check our answer negative 75 and 3 tenths good Number four, divide 3.7 into 9.574. So 9.574 divided by 3.7. Again, we get to use a calculator, so let's take advantage of that opportunity. Here we have our calculator on the, from the computer, and we'll punch that in. 9.574 divided by 3.7. Make sure you punch it in in the right order, and we get 2.587. Five six seven five six seven five six seven. It goes on forever like that. So we could round it two point five eight eight if we would like to. Two point five eight eight. Let's see what the answer has. Uh, two point five eight seven six. That's okay. They we rounded just one decimal place off of theirs, and that is perfectly okay. The next one, two hundred fifty four point seven divided by 6,000 and we get 0 .04245 0 .04245 I wrote them all out but if you would have done 0 .0425 I think that would have been alright let's check our answer here 0 .04245 number 6 37.65 divided by 0 .00 Eight. When we hit equal, wow, 4,706.25, 4706.25. Four, That's not too many decimals, so I'm guessing the answer will have all of them. It is indeed 4,706.25. Okay, let's move to the next one. Number seven, if a wood floor costs $4.50 per square foot, Let's write that down, $4.50, 4.5 per square foot. That's foot with a little squared on it. How much is that per square yard? Now, if we go back and look in the book, we note that it is nine square feet that equals one square yard. It's not a three to one ratio. 
and a reminder of how that works. If you have one square yard, that's three feet this way and three feet this way, so that when you connect them all up in a square, you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine square yards. And that's why nine square feet is one square yard. So we're going to times this by something that will change it into how much is that, or what is the cost, per square yard. So we need to times it by something that will put square yards on the bottom and get rid of feet squared on the top. So those two will cancel. And that's where this comes in handy, that we have 9 feet squared per yard squared. Now when we times them, the feet squared cancel out. They divide. And we get 4.5 times 9 is $40. 40 40.5, 40 dollars and 50 cents per square yard. Let's check the answer and see if we got that. 40 dollars and 50 cents per square yard indeed. Number 8. How much does it cost to run a 700 watt microwave? So 700 watt for 17 hours. I'm going to write that down. 17 hours. If the power company charges 12 cents, so that's 0.12 dollars per kilowatt hour. This is a KWH. All right, so the first thing we have to do, we're dealing with kilowatts here, but it's they say 700 watts. So you can do the conversion factor of watts to kilowatts, which is that there are 1,000 watts, oh, zero, 1,000 watts for one kilowatt. And when we do that and multiply them, we get that we actually have 700 divided by 1,000 moves the decimal three places. Some of you may be very familiar with how to change that, and that would be great. Yes, 700 watts is 0.7 of a kilowatt, 1,000 watts. So when we just times these together, 17 hours, Let's do that. If we times these, we get kilowatt hours. Then when we times this one, the kilowatt hours will cancel. So let's get our calculator out. 0.7 times 17, and that equals 11.9. So we really have 11.9. When we times them, they're not alike things at all, and we get kilowatt times hour. So we get 11.9 kilowatt hours. When we times this now by 0.12 kilo per kilowatt hour, the hours cancel and the kilowatts cancel. So let's take that number that we had, 11.9, times by 0.12 dollars. And it equals 1.428. 1.428 dollars. We're in dollars and cents, so we need to round to the nearest penny, nearest cent, 143. And that is correct with this electricity, that if it costs uh, 12 cents per kilowatt hour, that the kilowatts and the hours cancel when you multiply all of these things together. Good. Let's check our answer and make sure we're okay. $1.43 is how much it would cost to run that. The next one, find the following. Here we take 5% of this 39.48 to find the tax. Let's punch that in our calculator. 0 0.05 times 39.48 and that equals 1.97 or if we round to the nearest penny, $1.97 is the tax. $1.97 and in order to find the final price we would need to add that to 39.48 Eight, and that equals 41.45. You should also note that based on the shortcut we did in section 2.1, we could have done 39.48 times 1.05 because of the addition that we did here, and it would have gotten us straight to the total price. We wouldn't have been able to get the tax out of that, but it would have gotten us to the final price indeed. Number 10. Here's the price. We're saving 35%, which is 0.35 as a decimal. We're going to times that. So let's use our calculator. 2736 times 0.35 equals 
and 60 cents. 957.60 if we're dollars. So that's how much we get a save. That's 35% of the original. Now notice this is saving, so it's not added. It's subtraction. This is subtraction because it's saving. So 2,736 minus that 957.6. Let's punch that in the calculator. 2736 minus 957.6 equals 1778.4. 1778.40 if we're writing it in dollars and cents. That would be the final price. Number 11. Birds, 140. The black birds are 47. So we have 47 out of 140, and we need to change this to a percent. We get to use our calculator again, and we get 47 divided by 140, and that equals 0.3357. Let's put this out here, 0.3357. Uh, and we can round down to the 7 because there's a 1 after it. Now to change that to a percent, this needs to go 1, 2 places. So it's 33.57% of the birds were blackbirds. Marvelous. Let's double check our answer to make sure we're okay on these last couple. Yes, 197 and 4145 for number 9. Number 10 was 957.60 and 1778.40, and that was correct, and then 33.6%. So they rounded at one decimal place, which is good. We're right on.